Roaming Games Turkey is our partner, and this uh, panel is sponsored by them. Uh, I'd like to invite here uh, speakers, Ms. Simay Dinch from Re-Contact Games. She is the game producer. Hello, Simay. Game artist Ece Seyrek Hasdoğan, Merve Gonca Dömez from Bleach Studio, uh, software um, engineer, and Zuhal Eylül is from Junkfish, a UR programmer she is. I'd like to welcome them. Merhabalar, Serdar, Hello. hoş bulduk. Teşekkür ederim. Hello, Serdar. Thank you very much for your invitation. Can you turn on uh, my video, please? Merhaba tekrardan. Merhabalar. Bir saniye. Tamam mıyız? Tamam. Hello again. <gülüyor> Harika. Süpersin. Uh, yes, we are ready. Okay, tamamdır. Ben göremiyordum sizi. Okay, perfect. Sıkıntı yaşattı bilgisayar bana. Hepiniz tekrar hoş geldiniz. I'd like to salute you all and I'd like to welcome you uh, again. You have the floor, Simay. If you need anything, I'm here. Çok teşekkür ediyorum Serdar sana ve başta da Cevher Ayrılık olarak Ayrılık ve İntve ekibine çok çok teşekkürler. Gerçekten böyle bir zamanda böyle bir organizasyonu yapıp yine bize arkadaşlarla deneyimli kişilerle buluşturduğunuz için güzel partnerlikleriniz yaptığınız için de çok çok çok teşekkür ediyorum. Biz bu milyon bir şey olarak neler yapıyoruz isterseniz kısaca biraz bundan bahsedeyim birkaç kelime ile. Ondan sonra çok fazla uzatmadan buradaki efsane karşındaki üç tane sektörde gümbür gümbür çalışan üreten arkadaşlarımıza sizleyeceğim. Eee Yüzlerce etkinlik, hackathon, organizasyon, konferanslar düzenledik. Bunlardan en genel ve bize de hackathon hackathon hackathon hackathon hackathon bilim insanları, sanatçıları, oyun geliştiricileri, sosyal girişimleri bir araya topladığımız ve farklı disiplinleri bir araya gelip farklı sorunlar için çalıştığımız hackathonlar oldu. Eğer bizi takip etmek ve bizim etkinliklerimizi yayınla birlikte üretmek ve paylaşmak da istiyorsanız bu benim Games Türkiye'nin Instagram sayfasını takip edebilirsiniz. En son geçen ay Ars hackathon düzenledik. We organized an archathon, psychologists, designers uh, gathered uh, in that event and we did some isolation games actually. Uh, artists uh, from the gallery uh, was the place that we uh, exhibited our games. Well, we consider a game uh, as uh, an art piece actually, this is how we consider it and we keep organizing uh, such exhibitions and events uh, to prove it. And we uh, actually did it with really young people. Uh, I have three uh, actually uh, friends with me now. This is uh, actually how we met uh, in one of our uh, events. We uh, went to the Denmark Hackwick uh, camp uh, together. Uh, Eylül uh, was the uh, first actually uh, person in the first team. Uh, and Ece and Marve uh, participated at the second round uh, in our Denmark uh, visit. Well, this year, unfortunately, we cannot uh, pay such a visit to another de, değil, country because of the pandemic, but uh, hopefully next year we will carry out our visiting activities as well. Well, uh, çok az the game industry, var. as you know, does not represent a woman that much. E, However, uh, this industry has actually uh, multi-disciplines, it's quite, quite enriched. So, so uh, why we are only the uh, gamers, but not the producers or the designers or the developers, you know? This is what we question for, because we are working for the equality. So that's why I'd like to now give the floor to Eylül first. Hello, Eylül. You are working as a UI programmer and a junkfish. And Merve is a software engineer in a good studio. And AJ is a game artist. And I am a game producer myself. So, actually, you are the set of four, actually, people with the team. You would just 
have what you want. Uh, biraz rahatsız you know? bunları da değinebiliriz. Uh, Çünkü gerçekten tam bir bilim ekibi uh, ihtiyacı uh, olan uh, uh, alanlarda uh, içimiz arkadaşlarımız uh, bizimle birlikte. Uh, Eylül'cüm, uh, öncelikle biraz ATY programmer olarak çarpı için desin ama uh, biraz bunu öncesine gitmek istiyorum ve eğitimden biraz bahseder misin? Hangi üniversitede neden oynayın bir süre ve nasıl yer buldun bu ülkeye? Bu böyle bir seni tanımak istiyorum. Bu böyle bir seni tanımak istiyorum. First of all, I'm very uh, happy to be here. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. My story uh, is quite common, uh, to be honest. Uh, I have been uh, playing games uh, since a little child I was, and I was uh, actually um, planning my career uh, as such, especially when I was in the high school. I uh, studied in Özyen University. I graduated from the Department of uh, Computer uh, Engineering, and I graduated and I started working in a relax studio. I was working for the uh, in market uh, purchasing. Uh, I was writing the counts for that. And also uh, procedure generation was another area that I was working for. And after that, I uh, started uh, working in junk fish. During my education, Computer engineering, uh, of course, uh, was my uh, field. Uh, however, uh, game uh, development was uh, my hobby, and I uh, actually uh, auto-educated myself. I self-educated myself, I improved my theory, uh, and uh, I just looked for, you know, the ways to improve myself in internet platforms. I really uh, searched and looked uh, for ways uh, to do it. And uh, here I am. Well, I'll be back to you. Merve, seni tanıyabilir miyiz? Senin uzun bir eğitim sürecin var. I know that you have a long history of education. Ondan biraz da bahsederse süper olur. Well, on the very contrary of Eylül, I had no idea of becoming a computer engineering or uh, working in the game industry. Well, I had an interest on games, but I never thought of it as a career. I uh, studied actually architecture in Istanbul Technical University. I have decided uh, not to become an architect uh, because I have found that uh, actually a uh, profession and not that much suitable uh, to me. I've changed my department. I continued my education in the Department of Computer Engineering. And I was uh, just thinking about my uh, career, you know, wh while I was in the third grade and on the fourth grade. I visited a robotic uh, lab. Uh, I worked there for a while, but I did not like it. And uh, after that, I uh, participated to the seminars about the system engineering, and I disliked it as well. So uh, a master's uh, actually degree uh, was just opened in my university. Um, I met with some people from the game uh, developing hub and uh, we uh, designed actually developed a game together as a team and this is how I entered into the industry to be honest and in my uh, master thesis I knocked the door of a company and we had an interview and I worked there for a while and now uh, I'm actually working in my uh, third uh, company and I still uh, did not graduate unfortunately from the school yet but um, it's good uh, you know it's going good uh, I'm happy with my decision well, you're, uh, well we are also happy that you're a part of the game well, uh, it's good because first you have this 
evet, ben uh, the things that you dislike, dislike. You Bu know, you tried and Biraz you just, you know, experienced the things and you figured Ve, out first the, the things Eylül that you are not into Ece'de that much. And we know that there are a lot of game clubs and I know that all of our participants, panelists, worked in different clubs and it's really important actually to meet with different people so that you can develop different visions and you can really enlarge your network. So I would advise it to everybody, please join to the university clubs. Istanbul Technical University has such clubs and I know that as well the Department of Architecture as well supports it and they carry out the great activities. If there are maybe students among us, please go for it. Bahçeşehir University is quite a pioneer on this issue, but let me as well mention Bilgi University, ITÜ, İstanbul University. So these are other universities that you can take part of in different clubs. Edre, you have the floor now. You are a game artist. Let me talk about my story shortly. Well, instead of deciding on the sector, I had thought about, you know, uh, the atmospheres uh, that it's not really possible uh, to be part of in real life. So I uh, thought about animation for a while and as well a game design. Uh, these were all interrelated with one another. And uh, I studied, by the way, a graphic design in uh, Bilkent University. And when I was in the second uh, grade, uh, I have decided uh, to be part of game sector. Uh, global game jam uh, events uh, actually triggered me, to be honest, encouraged me to uh, take that decision back then. And I was in the university and uh, we established a game developers club uh, and we organized our own events. So we did many uh, activities. In my uh, finalizing, uh, finishing thesis, actually, I designed a game. Uh, so uh, graphics and the visuals were prepared by me, uh, myself. Uh, I uh, went to London for the master's degree and I uh, focused on uh, the game uh, design specifically. Uh, it was a very multidisciplinary, actually, uh, department, uh, storytellers, graphic designers, game developers, they were all together uh, in the same class and we um, had that experience all together in London. We, I gained experience, of course. We developed great games all together. And when I was back to Turkey, uh, first uh, I worked uh, in a workplace uh, for one year and a half. And Udog Games uh, was the company that I worked for. Speedy 3D uh, were the areas that I took active uh, actually roles. And then I applied to the Atom uh, company in Ankara. It's an incubation center. So I met uh, with the team uh, actively. We started working together. So we uh, really liked each other and uh, we tried many things and then we uh, actually talked uh, with uh, the uh, um, Rocket Games. Uh, we had an exclusive uh, actually agreement with them, contract with them. We have been working together for one year. Rocket Games uh, is uh, actually a broadcasting uh, firm. <laughs> Well, do you have any uh, games that you are uh, broadcasting? Hyper casual uh, focus we go on, uh, which means that we uh, keep uh, testing and we pre uh, broadcast them. But for the total broadcasting, actually, uh, for the total commissioning, uh, we're not there uh, yet. How many people are there in the team? Seven people. 
Well, we have uh, enlarged our team recently, so we are seven people. Game Jam and Atom is the place that uh, you are working, and uh, we receive the question uh, generally, you know, how to establish uh, a group or a team, and I advise uh, people to participate into the Game Jams and Atoms, because uh, these are the places that you will meet with uh, other developers and other people, because uh, you know, uh, it might start uh, with um, like three uh, people and you can maybe increase it to seven people afterwards. So I encourage actually uh, students and young people uh, for that. Thank you. Eylül, hey, let's continue Şimdi, with you. You had a program, yes, you had started in Junkfish. Could you please uh, talk about your responsibility? Uh, because it's a foreign company, right? Is that right? Yes. Hyper casual, casual, Hyper -casual, casual or mobile PC games or for the streaming or for the PC. What type of uh, games do you develop? For the PC it is. Uh, Drunk Fish uh, is a Scottish uh, actually company. It's located uh, in, um, in Scotland, but uh, it has a, a, an office in as well Singapore. It has a very popular game. PewDiePie, Markiply, are the other uh, famous uh, YouTubers uh, that have uh, really uh, worked at that game, and uh, the company has gained a lot of fame and reputation. Uh, and Mushroom uh, 2 uh, was uh, just created after the first uh, edition, first version. And, and I participated into the team 67 months ago uh, before the uh, broadcasting of the second uh, edition. So I work uh, with interfaces, which means that I uh, enable the interaction in between the game and the uh, gamers, uh, the buttons and as well the panels, you know, how uh, would they work and how to uh, receive the data from the gamers and reflect it into the game so that you can just create an interaction. So uh, this is uh, actually the uh, field that I am uh, actively working. This is my task. What's the num number of the employee uh, of Drunk Fish? A Scottish team is composed of uh, 20 people. Well, uh, remote uh, work system is just uh, the benefit of the pandemic and it is uh, now easier to work remotely. What would you recommend uh, to uh, our attendees uh, for the job application? How did you apply for that job? Why a Twitter? Uh, foreign Indies, uh, they all use Twitter. So it is a little bit difficult to uh, go into the deep. Uh, you know, but if you are to find correct contacts, uh, then you just start seeing job uh, actually uh, advertisements. So, frankly, uh, the most important uh, opportunity for me was visiting Denmark because I uh, actually uh, gained a small common. Uh, so, I actually improved my relationship with my network and I've started seeing the uh, job AdWords and the job posting of uh, different companies. It's really funny because for the first time I, I saw that job posting, um, I was just so discouraged and I just, you know, uh, ignored it because I thought that they wouldn't hire me. And then I just resolved it, you know, that job Posting, and uh, then I thought, okay, maybe it's a sign. Uh, then maybe I can send my, uh, maybe uh, you know, uh, CV. So, if you use Twitter, please contact with uh, foreign Indies, and uh, also, also. Follow uh, reputable Indies in the world because uh, they share uh, 
job adwords and uh, I, they as well share great uh, opportunities for female developers for example in our after our denmark visit uh, i actually earned a scholarship for uh, america and it was also an actual coincidence. I've seen a post on Twitter and I applied for it and I actually got the scholarship. GDC, GDC uh, is a game developer in conference. And uh, we have as well a great uh, fairs uh, exhibition, uh, uh, popular uh, fairs. And uh, most of them are now are uh, on digital platforms. And uh, you can uh, access to many people. Uh, of course, uh, but uh, you know, uh, being physically in the same environment uh, is different. Uh, Jeffrey is organizing a gaming Istanbul, uh, and it was one of the biggest uh, actual affair of uh, Turkey, Istanbul. We miss it. Hopefully, uh, we will have the physical version soon. But, uh, you know, now these uh, fairs and exhibitions are uh, organized in the uh, virtual environment. Uh, cinema Games, games, movies, uh, are the different uh, disciplines uh, that are brought by the uh, gaming uh, actually affairs uh, and uh, networking uh, opportunities shall be used. So I would recommend you to participate uh, in two, uh, different uh, fairs and exhibitions. Even contacting the Maya Theater uh, is quite meaningful. Let's continue with uh, Gonja. Gonja, can you please talk about your responsibilities a little bit? Well, I started working as a developer. And when it is needed in different platforms, I um, helped out uh, to uh, the game and game-like uh, projects uh, developments. And now we have a, an artificial museum, a virtual museum, sorry. So, uh, so we uh, i worked uh, in the vr uh, entrance so that's all uh, was it established within the techno city guy studios is separate it has a uh, uh, actually uh, office in oslo uh, istanbul the team is uh, composed of uh, actually um, 15 uh, people, but they hire freelancer, uh, freelancers when it is needed. So we do the projects coming from the customers. So we do not uh, actually develop our own games, but we uh, develop solutions for uh, game companies. For example, for a project photogrammetry is needed in such a, a situation uh, we work with the expert of photogrammetry uh, as a freelancer or we uh, hire a sound engineer for example for another project so the team uh, as, uh, elemental team is uh, composed of 15 people but based on the size of the projects we can be uh, over 20. So you work uh, actually uh, as a B2B uh, solution provider, right, for the companies. So uh, actually you use your uh, game experience uh, for uh, creating solutions. Now let's continue with Edge. Uh, well, we know that we have developed uh, actually uh, trends and it's quite now common. Uh, we know that there are small teams and uh, interest into the sector is uh, quite good in that regard. I think it is also is easier. Uh, according to uh, a recent uh, study in Google, um, 107,000 developers, um, well, um, more of uh, 2,000 of them are Turkish uh, and they developed more than 8,000 uh, actually uh, games. Yes, so, so uh, can you please uh, tell me uh, about uh, uh, your experience, you know, as a game artist? What kind of tools do you use? Uh, well, stuff learning. Uh, what are, what's the most important thing? What are the inevitable things for you? Yeah, of course. 
Well, first of all, uh, well, I started as a um, and as a game artist. Sometimes people think of um, when it is an artist as if you're a soul warrior, for instance, or else an explorer, uh, as if it's the uh, reflection of your inner world outside. That is what you think of uh, when you uh, think of an artist. But when you are a game artist, actually, you are not alone. You are not individual. This requires teamwork. It's a, it is a multidisciplinary work, the graphicer, the software, and you're not the only artist in that respect. So in between artists, uh, the visuals, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, we should all be on the same page and be able to speak the same language. And also, uh, in terms of hyper casual, uh, speed is really important. And also, uh, the target audience, the customer, knowing them is important. And in order to be successful, uh, delivering practical solutions uh, swiftly uh, and uh, uh, delivering uh, jobs uh, which can uh, pave the way for people to uh, enjoy the game is important. So in, when you're involved in the game sector, in what areas did you develop yourself as a game artist and what tools did you use? Because uh, maybe we could like shed a light on people in this respect. Well, yes, of course, um, they are when I was doing my BA, actually, uh, I had a, a full command of uh, Adobe uh, Photoshop and then uh, 3D modeling. I learned it myself. I started with Maya and then tutorials are on the Internet. I mean, there are full uh, loads of uh, tutorials. Uh, and loyal, they all have different advantages over each other. It's not that one is better than the other. It's a matter of preference. I like both. I, li I like the futures of both of them. And also, uh, as a game artist, uh, I, uh, of course, deal with 2D and 3D and hyper casual uh, speed is really important here. So in the game sector, uh, Game uh, engine uh, is important. We use Unity, for instance, but sometimes game companies, uh, they may have their own engines. Uh, but an artist uh, should, uh, I mean, uh, have a command of that interface as well, which is a required feature of an artist. Uh, because when we talk about Unity, for instance, except from the code, it doesn't need a coding, but still the artist uh, should be able to offer certain things uh, like the shadow uh, uh, settings, um, the uh, stage uh, setup, uh, for instance, and, and also the sound setup. And also there is this break keys, um, a YouTube channel. And when it comes to game developing and uh, de developing yourself as an artist, it is an important channel. I could just pass on the link to you. And in Maya, there are certain problems uh, that you have. There is this academic, uh, academic Phoenix class that I use on YouTube in order to overcome those problems. They've got really good tutorials. Do that means uh, tutorials are also good, but uh, they are um, um, based on a fee, but sometimes they offer discounts on their fees. So on the 3D side, I kind of self-learned this 3D. And in my uh, undergraduate, uh, actually, I had studied 2D and I myself learned 3D. OK, thank you, Elu. Uh, you are still continuing your education and you said that you had learned Unity yourself. What channels do you follow? Just like Ece has mentioned, if you've got any websites that you made use of, can you also share them with us? Yes, of course. Well, after the session, I could just send off the links to you. 
Rakesian, yes, but be, uh, there is also an ex. There is another thing that I follow: Unity 3D College. Jason, I don't remember the surname on this channel because they changed the name, the name of the channel. Well, this channel is both explains unity and it also explains about clean coding, for instance, the codes that engineers are using. Instead of becoming a code monkey, you kind of How can you write a more neat and systematic code, for instance? That I extra love these, uh, this uh, YouTube channel in this respect because it teaches us to write clean codes. And also for the beginners, I advise Unity mini games. And it's got tutorials as well. Those mini games. For instance, an FPS, there is this basic, like assets, stages, codes, codes, but it is like a small base. It has been launched and published as such. And you can just download it and mod it and you can add extra stuff. You can change certain things. And on their website, uh, they've got these tools as well. It is called micro game. Uh, I highly advise those tutorials. And also there is this FPS uh, competition game and a puzzle uh, word game, an RPG game. And uh, these are really nice areas for you to develop yourself. And I evaluated the codes of those games. So I highly advise that site also. Well, if you could just write these links on the chat box, it would be great. Oh, yeah, I'll do that right away. Actually, you have developed mobile games, hyper casual games, and now uh, you are working on PC games. So looking at them, I mean, there are different gamer types there, and you have developed games for those different gamers. Can you just benchmark the two in that respect well the, in the uh, previous mobile game that i had developed it was not 100 percent a mobile game but it was like a tool because uh, for this fpr games it was an application that designed a map and it had a large audience and I didn't like uh, directly work with hyper casual. I had applied for the hyper casual companies, but it's, I've never uh, directly worked with hyper casual, but uh, the areas that I worked with were like had a niche audience. Uh, so of course I've absorbed a lot uh, this sector. And if I were to make a comparison, At least uh, talking about our game, there is this community. And in, on Discord, we've got a community as well. And together with fans there, uh, we can get into one-on-one -on -one interaction. And if there is a problem, for instance, about the game, they directly report it to us on Discord. and. It's a lack of a kind of an integrated community there. Uh, the characters that we create, for instance, they uh, prepare fan arts for them. And one has with Down's pets had shot a video dance dance uh, part. I mean, they were trying to play the game on dance part. So we have these uh, like cool, entertaining uh, stuff going on. On Fridays, we play games together, the developers and fans together with you. So, I mean, uh, well, uh, yes, uh, establishing community and managing community is really important. So I guess, and this has to be taken into account. Uh, well, uh, managing a community, uh, establishing a community, uh, from what you said, uh, uh, we also uh, see the importance. Well, 
Welcome to our panel. Şey çok tatlı efsane bir ekipleri var onların da. got a legendary team actually based abroad. Selam göndereyim. I just wanted to greet them. Okay. Got a recommendation. Christy Cos. Probably you've heard. oyun geliştiricisi olarak oyununuzu nasıl pazarlayabilirsiniz? How you can market your game? How can you get in to touch with people and establish your own community? In that respect, they've got really good stuff. And uh, I will be sharing their link. Yes, Gonca, coming to you. Uh, you work with me, but about VR and AR, I know your work. So recently, with remote working, with pandemic, of course, uh, the interest in this area of VR has increased. The ecosystem there has Enlarged. So, what are your future targets concerning VR and your future targets, your own individual future targets? Well, VR's structure has changed in the past. In trade fairs, for instance, uh, this playing uh, VR was really extensive. It's popular, but now we don't have any fairs left. Uh, so uh, with this pandemic, more kind of, uh, I mean, VR platforms have turned into uh, individual communication. People want to see each other's faces or else have a closer uh, contact, for instance, and they want to escape from their own homes in a sense. Uh, so that is what VR has turned into. When talking about AR, well, my thesis is on AR now. Uh, well, the D&D game, you receive a data on a mat and you play the game, but of course the animations, uh, you would AR, you display it on a mobile phone. Uh, so that is the project that I'm working on with my <clears throat> academicians at the university. So the very purpose there, of course, is to uh, draw and uh, allure people who are distanced, distant to uh, role-playing games. I had also worked in hyper-casual in the past. Uh, well, hyper-casual has got both pros and cons, especially for uh, softwareers. Well, what I see the most is that it enables you to learn Unity really fast because every week or as every B-weekly, uh, in a totally different trend, you uh, start developing something different and you have to learn everything about it and you have to complete that design. So what I am disappointed about is that this may not be valid for everybody, but I cannot go back to the code that I have written or else optimize the job that I have done. I cannot do anything in that sense. Uh, so that feeling of like uh, doing it and throwing it, you have to do because, because based on the trend, you design things, do things, and then you just have to dump it. That disturbed me. That's why I just gave it up. So from now on, either on, VR or else, well, I'm thinking of going into something more low level when it comes to optimization. And uh, the graphic programmers had an influence on me in that sense. Well, most probably I will like um, toward myself into that direction. I mean, that's it. Okay, thank you for your sharing. Um, so you are a co-founder, Ece, and you are also a game artist. So what are your future targets? What would you like to do? Would you like to continue with Hyper? Casual or else? Would you like to go to Casual Midcore and continue your existence there? Well, actually, uh, we actively develop Hyper Casual, but uh, our doors are open to Casual also from time to time. I mean, we kind of have a tendency for the casual as well uh, as a team. And also, 
we also carry out certain R&D projects we apply for to be talked, for instance, and uh, we have had uh, trials on VR as well. But of course, our general structure focuses on hypercasual currently. But uh, I mean, from time to time, as I said, we would like to we want to have a broader uh, viewpoint if there are opportunities which are raised. Uh, for instance, uh, on that R&D VR project, we want to more focus on, on that and we want to pursue that project with that project. So, uh, you're working with a publisher. Do you, have you benefited from any governmental support? Because the economy is providing certain support, like commission support, uh, promotional support. Have you benefited? No, currently not. No. But in the future, why not? But uh, we've received Technocant tax uh, support, tax discount support. Apart from that, I mean, that's it. I mean, uh, with the publisher, we've got uh, the publisher supports us also. Okay, so the ones who would like to establish their own companies, please search the Technocant. And the Ministry of Economy uh, gives commission support, marketing support. Uh, we are not aware of these supports. We do not utilize those grants. So through a consultancy company, you can access them. Or as the Ministry of Economy, you can visit their website in order to benefit from those supports, governmental support. When compared to uh, our current days to three, two or three years ago, uh, in universities, incubation centers, for instance, uh, they are also interested in these projects. They can allocate you a space. Uh, they find trainers, mentors in Istanbul University, at Yıldız Technical University. You have to chase those opportunities, as I guess, because marketing, when it comes to hypercasual, I mean, it's to understand data and to be able to uh, comment on data and uh, do manufacturing uh, production uh, really fast. Uh, some companies, they launch 9 to 10 games per month, for instance, and they have to know, understand the data so, so as not to lose on that trend and launch games immediately. Publishers are also important. Uh, now we've got Turkish publishers as well. And there are uh, HR companies that only provide, for instance, uh, people for the game sector, uh, the gaming sector. So I hope that these conditions continue. And with new investors, we will more revive the sector and uh, start uh, continue doing fantastic job and do global job uh, business. Uh, we are not competitors to each other. Sharing is really important. Our purpose is to promote our games on a global level. So one of the most important things in that respect is experience and uh, um, gaining more experience. How can we go to do that? Uh, game jam, fairs, events, and digital events, for instance. By attending those events, we're going to be um, gaining more experience. We are into our last five minutes. If you've got, if participants have got questions, uh, we can have their questions or else. If in the last five minutes uh, want to have your final remarks, we can uh, also listen to you. Let's start with Eylül and receive her final remarks. Eylül, do you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, what are your recommendations to newcomers in this sector? Well, Uh, find a niche area for yourself. Okay, you write codes, but uh, you can write a generous code. And this is something that everybody can, dance, can do. But um, procedural generation, for instance, I worked on it a lot. And with, uh, so when people talk about procedural. Uh, I uh, I mean, people now have started recognizing me. So find a special area for yourself and be, become an expert there. Uh, I mean, this need not be about programming. Uh, it could be about artists, for instance, uh, 3D art, sculpting in 3D art or else 
voxel arts, for instance. Micro uh, find a, a micro area where you can specialize. In this respect, you can find employment, especially abroad, much easier. And we've received a question, by the way, right now. Uh, Sergan Turan asks, uh, we are actually uh, are working on the working on the game. Yes, we're developing this game. Two people in our home. After this, the game process is over. What are we going to do? But nothing becomes over. It is the end. Actually, I mean, before you actually finish of your game design, you start consulting a mentor and develop your network. And if you don't have any access data and comment on data, you should go to a publisher, but you should have a vision. Yes, you will work on a game, you will gain experience, but only by developing a game existing in the sector is really difficult. And the next question, I want you to answer this question. Emine, right. Uh, in a game company, how many people should there be? Minimum three people, according to me. And game developer, game artist, and producer. They should definitely be in a game company. These should be the first. Ece, as a founder, uh, who, I mean, uh, what did you take into account? Or else what do you still take into account when you have a new person in your team well recently uh, we had hired an artist and a producer a month ago it was could you if there is a book link for instance uh, we requested and our software is evaluated i evaluate the artists portfolio or else a link that could serve as a portfolio like Behance Art Station and CV or else LinkedIn link is also important and also in that uh, pre-discussion actually we have an interview and we kind of more or less understand the experience of that person, whether he she has been involved in gaming before, whether that person is eager, passionate to enter into this gaming sector, and whether he she is eager to for self-learning. And if there is a problem, for instance, then would this person seek to find a solution? I mean, these are the things that we take into account. And also, uh, team uh, work compatibility is also very important. Yes. So there are people who are on their own, who develop games, who publish games, but being alone kind of really makes uh, you exhausted after some time. So having two or three people in the team is really important, and learning on the journey is important, and doing work in different genres would also be important. We've got final one minute. Going I would like to give the floor to you. What are your recommendations to our uh, friends? Well, the thing that I benefit the most is uh, the game developing groups. Uh, when I first started developing games, women in games, I attended their events. And then I had this connection with women in games and I started knowing people from the women in games. And you know, for instance, there is an in the school, at the university, uh, the a game development club. I benefited from this community a lot. And face-to-face -face discussions were really good actually in the past, but now even though online, uh, communication is important, interaction is important. If like I encounter a problem and I cannot find a solution, I can just go back to that community and ask, I'm just trying this thing, but it doesn't work. 
So really fast, swiftly, I received response from friends. I mean, um, uh, interacting with a person who has uh, faced a similar uh, problem really works wonders. And uh, establishing a team is also really important for yourself. And also uh, job posts, for instance, um, they also are uh, disseminating really fast in those communities. Well, thank you very much, friends. Why our purpose in this panel was to get to know you closer, better. Introduce people who are working in different uh, parts of the gaming sector. And in order to ensure gender equality in the sector, there is still a long way to go, but still with our enthusiasm and power, we are continuing uh, our journey. You can follow the Women in Games Instagram page. I would like to thank the Indigi team uh, for giving us this opportunity. Our hackathons, our events will continue, hopefully. We will be able to uh, carry out global projects and be of benefit to, our, to the members of our community. Now I would like to give the floor back to Sardar, and we will continue uh, uh, watching the event both today and tomorrow. Thank you very much to each one of you for your participation, for uh, sharing your experiences for the information that you've shared with us. It has been a really beneficial panel, especially for the ones who would like to enter into the sector, but don't know somehow uh, how to enter into this very sector. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Have a nice day.